Right, as I do own a number of 18650s that are fully operational, I decided to swap them, as manufacturers informed me that they do not produce this model, that I loved indeed. A quick review in the link in the right corner if you want to watch it, I just made you a photo relation, so enjoy. Anyways, a short guide how to get 18650 cell out and in. First of all, this water resistant Bluetooth speaker has loads of screws on the front and back panels, so I got rid of them with a proper Allen key. Panels came off without any problems. Next step included unscrewing side panels, one covering the SD and USB slots and the other one on the other side with the loop handle. Just a regular Phillips driver and just two screws on each side. More Allen screws from the front panel and we have our two speakers uncovered. Ooh, they look nice and shiny. The back cover has a sort of a bass reflex. It is not a speaker, it is just a pressure equalizer. The rubber gasket that works as a cover for the whole unit and a gasket making the device waterproof is extremely easy to remove when Allen screws are gone. On top of the device you will be able to record four push buttons covered with a strip of sellotape. Now it's time to remove a number of Philips screws from the rear panel of the speaker to uncover parts of the glorious Bluetooth speaker. That do look impressive for a 9 quid device. They look really good. I did not expect that. After identifying the power line of the 18650 I decided to test it with my multimeter and I got no reading at all. So as predicted the internal 18650 was totally dead. Well, it can happen sometimes. I uncovered the 18650 from a thermo shrink cover. Inside there was a small charge controller that seemed to be fully operational, so the only thing to change was 18650 cell. I gently deattached the nickel strip welded to the 18650 cell and I used loads of solder to to attach charge controller to a fully operational 18650. I do not have a proper 18650 welder, so I had to do it with solder. Remember to use flux and scratch the surface of 18650 electrodes to get good solder attachment. Well, the 18650 battery pack seems to be fully legged, so I could have tested the speaker and it was fully operational and I was very happy. I noticed that the bus reflex gasket was not installed properly, so I decided to get it properly in place so a water resistance of the device is not jeopardized. It was a small and easy job, 8 screws back in place using diagonal pressure from the most center located screws to the outside, you know, like a gasket in a combustion engine. Well, it was high time, I installed the 18650 back into the speaker. Before doing that, I covered my low quality soldering with loads of hot glue and paper covers from the original Yi Yang 18650 that I took out of the speaker. One big drop of hot glue to attach the 18650 properly in place so it wouldn't move inside of the device and done. Now just the back cover with six Phillips screws, rubber gasket all over the device and loads of Allen screws on the front and back panel, side panels and the device is up and running again. I rescued the 